All right, hello everyone. We got a fun one for you today. I'm here actually with Jenny, the infamous Jenny. Say hi. Hello. And we're gonna talk about how to be efficient during restorative procedures. So what I did is I kind of did a completely unedited version of this. So you'll literally see full time, there's no cuts. Um, and this is the case uh, we've already at this point have cleaned out the caries. Um, we have obturated the cana canals um, and we are ready to fill it up. So at this point we just took our check film and here's where we go in. So first thing I'm gonna do, the rubber dam was a little bit too close on that area. So I stretched it out over the tooth next to it and we are going to start by dealing with that bleeding gingival tissue. So start off with the ferric sulfate to clean out the gums and what my goal is to do here is kind of tamp it down as well as get the bleeding to stop. Now is this going to do the whole thing? Probably not. Um, you'll see Jenny's in there suctioning during this period as well. We're going to dry that off and what I'm going to do now is after we get everything kind of nice and dry I'm going to see if there's any bleeding points and I've already asked her telling her that I'm going to need the alpha tip which is going to come in after. So that's what she's grabbing right now and during this time what are you doing? <laughs> At this time I'm just making sure that my suction is in there. The chemicals inside that don't really taste very good, but then also with the alpha, um, if the suction is in there, it's to prevent any smell, basically. Yeah, because we are cauterizing it, so it is going to bleed. Um, you'll, you'll see I kind of been mostly focusing here on those papillae as they're, you know, um, both buccal and palatal because that's where some of the more inflamed tissue is. We we'll go back in and rinse again. Um, just kind of getting things nice and dry here because we don't want any bleeding. We want to have as good a bond as possible. Um, I, I did the zoomed out version for you here so you can kind of see exactly how we do this process. So at this point now, I'm looking at it, trying to figure out if there's anything other, any other bleeding spots. There's a little bit on the palatal right there. So we're gonna get that nice and dry. At this point, have you gotten out all the restorative stuff? Yes, I have all of that prepped and ready on the counter. And have you mixed the prime and bond? I have not mixed the prime and bond just because the prime and bond we use does tend to set up. Yep. But I have everything prepped that way. Doctor has put in all of this work to stop the bleeding. We're prepped and ready to go so that way there's no excess bleeding after. Do you hear that guy? She called me doctor. I feel all fancy. <laughs> <laughs> so we've now got the bleeding to stop. So we'll go through the normal bioclear process at this point. So the disclosing solution, she's hand handing that to me. It does stain. So you do want to be very careful when you're passing it back and forth. I've gotten in a lot of trouble for leaving it in places that I shouldn't because <laughs> it stains everything. Um, at this point though, I'm going to go over and we have swapped mirrors. Not sure if you caught that. We we use the larger size four mirror because I don't care if these get scratched up. They're a little bit more resilient as well. And Jenny's in there with the air as well as the suction. Anything else to say about the blaster besides it goes everywhere? <laughs> it goes everywhere and that mirror is large so it's really hard to keep it clean in the for the whole thing, so I just focus on one area so doctor can see. Yeah, so what I'm doing now, um, I can see that the bleeding's looking well controlled, so we're gonna go on to the etch process here. Is this the time when you start mixing the, yeah. Correct, at the etch, I then do mix the prime and bond because we're going to use that next. Yeah, so this kind of is a built-in, we know it takes about 15 seconds for the etch to work. So during this time, I've handed it back to her. I'm getting ready with my water to rinse it out, and there we go. So she's already mixed everything at this point, and we're gonna be ready here for a picture. So you'll notice I've swapped mirrors a third time here to get ready for the photo mirror. I'm drying, and what are you doing, doing during this time? At this time, I'm bringing down the curing light and anything that I'll need to restore the tooth that I don't already have. Perfect. And you've already gotten the build it up. I've already, we already talked about Correct. what we're going to restore with. So that's one of the key things from the doctor's standpoint is to make sure you're communicating with your assistant what the plan is going to be here. So there's the still photo looking nice and clean. And we're going to start the bonding process here. So by this point, she's already mixed everything. And the first thing we hand is the bond or the prime. So going in and you're, during this point, you're getting the bonding agent ready, correct? Correct. And at this point, basically everything's done. I'm just patiently waiting there. Oh, I had handed you more. Yeah, so I will, and I'll tell her when I think I'm going to need more. This was a larger case, and so sometimes the one micro brush isn't enough to fully get all of that dentin nice and saturated there. So while I'm air drying this, she's going to come in and mix the, or get the uh, bonding part ready to go. Um, one thing to note for the assistants, if you're watching this, if I ask for it twice for the first time, I'm going to need it twice the second time. That's a good lesson to learn. <laughs> so just kind of be prepared. And after we do this part, this is where I actually take over some of it myself and you start mixing. So at this point, you've started to mix, correct? Correct. I've mixed it and getting ready to place it in the Centrix tube to hand to you. Yeah. And what I'm doing during this is I can work by myself. I have a little trash thing over on my side so I can throw it away. I'm going to air dry it so it's nice and 
and thin. And then I'm actually going to reach over and grab the curing light myself. So the assistant doesn't hand me the curing light at this point because it's more important that she takes the time to mix up the build it into the Centrix tube. Um, any notes as far as mixing it? We can make a separate video on that because it is a little bit insane. <laughs> it does take some time to learn how to do. <laughs> nope, yeah. Just mixing and then just cleaning up I, I clean up my spatula as soon as possible because it does harden up. Yeah, so you want to make sure one of the goals that we have with any treatment is that it doesn't take long to turn over the room at the end. And the key here is to be ready to clean everything up. What are you doing right now? Right now I'm cleaning up the um, the spatula and prepping to hand you the glick. Perfect. And so this is where, and sometimes we, if I need more, I'll let her know at this point, she can start mixing up again. But in general, it's good to have a standard process so that both the assistant and the doctor know what's coming next. I really don't have to call out for any of these items because we've done this so many times that it just kind of becomes second nature at this point. Um, during this point, when I'm working on the glick, what are you doing? I'm cleaning up the composite gun and getting ready to hand you the curing light. Perfect. And so at this point, uh, she's already handed me the curing light. Um, you might see it switch here. Yep, right there. That hand switching is Jenny is now holding it because what I'm doing on my side is switching out the burrs for my high speed hand pieces because I know I'm going to be using that flat disc, the prep burr, and the barrel burr. And so by having those ready to go, I don't have to waste any time switching them out. Try to use moments where you know there's going to be downtime, like the light curing or when you're etching or when you have to wait for something to dry for that to be the time when you do stuff on the side. So at this point, I've already swapped out everything. I like to use the big wheel burr on the electric ham piece, and Jenny's going to be in here with me for the rest of the time, so not much that she's doing here. Um, as far as the cleanup, by this point, your tray's pretty much ready to be taken away, right? Correct. Good to go. It's just missing the mirror you have in your hand and the bite block that's in the patient's mouth. Yeah, so not too much extra there. Um, and as far as what we're doing here, you can see she's using that air water, keep things nice and clean. What I'm trying to do here is make that margin nice and flush. And so you'll probably see me zoom in here in just a second to make sure everything looks beautiful. I'm also reprofiling the tooth next to it. Not sure if you noticed in that original x-ray, but it was not the best uh, <laughs> shaped composite. So this is a great time. Um, help your general dentist get in there and clean that off and make it nice and smooth so that they have a nice broad contact before it was kind of just a, a block that was pushed out into that area now it's nice and smooth and so that crown isn't going to just touch in a small little two to three millimeter area. it'll be the entire thing other thing you want to do is make sure you're rounding this area going on to both the buckle and the palatal to make sure that the the dentist has a very easy time prepping it. If you leave it kind of rough in this area, it's a little bit harder. And then I like to make sure that, you know, there is that frication between the mesial root and the MB root and the palatal. And so that's what I'm kind of shaping in here is that area to make sure that's as smooth as possible as well. Um, what else kind of can you say as far as the efficiency with this aspect? I mean, we're pretty much done as far as the, the rest of it. But I think the idea here is always be cleaning up and make it so Definitely. that when you're, when you have down time. One of the uh, key components that we do is making sure that one of us is always doing something. And that means sometimes the doctor holds the curing light while the assistant cleans up stuff and Correct. or vice versa. I'll, uh, I'll hand it to her and I can switch out the burrs. So look for those small little moments. It, it seems silly, but it really does add up over time. Um, you know, the, the time in this video, it's I think it took eight minutes from start to finish. So from our, our last final, okay, we took the uh, check film, everything looks good, to us taking off the rubber dam, it's it's pretty much eight minutes. The extra time you see on the video is just from the still pictures, and that's it. So I didn't, I didn't edit any of this off. Um, you'll see us uh, do the final picture here. Um, at this point, you've kind of put... You put my last mirror away and <laughs> you're ready to go, right? <laughs> Correct. Everything's all cleaned up. By the time the doctor sits the patient up, my tray's completely closed and yeah. everything's cleaned. And that's that's what's really nice is because if we if you we work in an emergency situation, so the faster you can get people in, the better it's going to be. Um, come in here with the final little rinse, make sure it looks good, and then assistant gets the final X-ray. I talk to him, we give him a proxy brush for that open area, and we're all done. So, um, anything else to add as far as efficiency when it comes to restorative? No, not that I can think of. Perfect. As always, thanks for watching. Drop a comment below if you have any questions, and we'll talk to you next time. You can say bye if you want. Bye. <laughs>